Welcome back to Weekend Live. Well, the US president has again reaffirmed his support for his Supreme Court pick, despite ordering an FBI investigation into Brett Kavanaugh and sexual assault allegations against him. It comes after this week's gathering of the annual United Nations General Assembly, which was dominated by President Trump. Joining me now to discuss this is... Peter Matthews from LA, Professor of Political Science at Cypress College. Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Donald Trump has come You're out welcome. saying that uh, Brett Kavanaugh will someday be recognised as a truly great justice of the United States Supreme Court, yet has ordered this FBI investigation. But really, the answer is, will he or won't he be confirmed as a Supreme Court judge? And will it get even harder for Republicans to keep defending him? It all depends on the variables, such as uh, Senator Susan Collins of Maine and Senator Lisa Murkowski. Uh, sorry, uh, yeah, she's in from Alaska. And she's these two senators are very important because they are pro-choice senators on the abortion issue. And they're very concerned about what Kavanaugh might feel about this issue. And uh, what happened, uh, you know, in the, in the Judiciary Committee was remarkable, where Senator Flake came out and was able to work out a compromise of 10 days of investigation at the very most. Uh, limited in scope by the FBI. Originally, the, the Republicans were going to ramrod this through and not have any investigation and just vote to confirm and vote, vote to actually advocate the confirmation and then on the, floor, on the full floor of the Senate to vote to confirm uh, the, uh, the Justice Kavanaugh into a Supreme Court justice. That would have been really uh, amazingly tragic in a lot of ways, but especially for the Republican Party as well and the country. And there's a lot at stake here, though, because if they don't secure the nomination of Brett Kavanaugh, then the window will close before the midterm elections. Is that right? Absolutely right, because there's a very good chance the Democrats will win the House back. But most importantly, they might actually win the Senate back. They're only two votes short. It's 51 to 49 in favor of the Republicans. So if the Democrats win two seats, then it'll be a majority Democratic Senate, and it'll be very impossible virtually for Trump to be able to confirm Kavanaugh or possibly have a difficult time with any other nominee. So it's going to be a major problem for Trump, and he could also possibly face charges of impeachment by the House. And eventually, of course, uh, the Senate would have to remove by two-thirds. So that's more difficult. But still, they have a lot of blockage from the Democratic-dominated uh, Congress if things change hands in November, November the 6th. And just on another matter, Donald Trump insists he has evidence that China is attempting uh, to meddle in the US midterm elections. And we know that tensions between the two countries are already on edge. This certainly won't help. Uh, no, it certainly won't, because you have a domestic uh, crisis, a dom domestic challenge. At the same time, you got a foreign policy major issue with China, a couple of them, mainly because Trump, Trump instituted a trade war by putting tariffs on steel and aluminum and goods coming from China, and he escalated it further, and China retaliated. Now we have inflation starting up here in our country already, and prices are going up even for working class people that supported Trump. So it's a major problem for him domestically, but he's also now stuck with the Chinese situation with trade and also arguing that China has interfered with the American elections by saying that China is targeting the Midwestern states with higher with tariffs against farmers in the Midwest uh, to, to take support away from Trump. It's quite remarkable, all these different moving parts at the same time. And it's, it just remains to be seen how it's all going to turn out and, and end up in the end. I also want to talk about Iran. Uh, the U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton has warned Iran that there will be, quote, a hell to play if Tehran tried to harm the U.S. and its allies. And Trump also told the U.N. General Assembly that anti-Iran sanctions would be tougher than ever before. What is your take on Washington's current strategy towards Iran? Well, first of all, I think that uh, President Trump was wrong to withdraw from the nuclear accord with Iran that President Trump and that President Obama had negotiated very carefully, and that the entire world practically supports all the way, including our major allies. Trump is acting unilaterally to pull out of that now, and I think we had Iran uh, in a good situation where they were going to be, make it very difficult for them to develop a nuclear weapon for many, many years, at least a dozen years, and now it's, uh, there are, they could do whatever they want, basically, although they're, they pledged to adhere to the terms of it if the rest of the world would, in fact, do that. But the United States is not. And Trump is putting pressure on Iran. I don't know what his ultimate goal is. If it's regime change, that would be an awful thing to do, because we saw what happened in Iraq. And Trump ought to really work with the rest of the world and see that multilateral cooperation is the best way to bring arms control and especially nuclear proliferation under control.
Before the UN General Assembly, Trump uh, tweeted that he had no plans to meet with the Iranian president on the sidelines, but uh, Iran didn't want to meet with Trump either. Why do you think that Iran doesn't want to talk to Donald Trump? Do you think it's this nuclear deal that is the basis of it? I think it's primarily the nuclear deal and the sanctions that uh, the president has pushed uh, against Iran now as punishment when the rest of the world does not want to sanction Iran. There's a major conflict there, and Iran wants to be sure that they can survive economically. Now, I'm not saying this is a perfectly democratic regime in Iran. They have their own theocracy, so to speak, and that's not what people we in the West admire or wish on our country. But yet, that's an independent country, a sovereign nation with influence in the Middle East. And Trump should not just treat them like a banana republic, for example. And he needs to really, I think, be more measured in his approach to foreign policy, especially in crisis situations, and consider our allies' points of view. It's very important to work with the allies on Iran and other, other problems in the world as well. And finally, I want to talk about Trump declaring that he endorses a, a two-state solution to bring an end to the Israel-Palestine conflict. This was actually the first time he has come out publicly and, and said this. It really is, and it's, it's quite remarkable, because he also is the first president to move the U.S. embassy to Jerusalem, or to have planning on doing that and declaring that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel, without giving a, an equal treatment toward Palestine, saying that East Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine, which, by the way, was the, was the agreement, according to the, uh, the settlement of U.N. Resolution 242, that would create a two-state solution. Trump finally has come aboard, at least verbally, saying he's for the two-state solution, but his actions have to follow his words. Otherwise, he loses credibility entirely. And I'm sure the Palestinians don't trust him much at all right now, given what he has done to give Israel so much support against an even-handed, more balanced approach toward Palestine as well. I think it's a very important, critical issue, maybe one of the most critical issues in the entire world right now. And it's been that way for many, many decades. And Trump needs to really look at his past history of, of the Middle East, of, especially Israel and Palestine, and what other presidents have done successfully, and be measured and careful and balanced toward Palestine, and not just take one side. Peter Matthews, Professor of Political Science at Cypress College. Thank you so much for joining us here in Australia today. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.